Hi everyone, welcome to Pop Buzz. I'm Benedict. I'm delighted to say I'm joined by George and Dean to talk about 1917. Uh, no nonsense, this is one of the greatest films I've ever seen in my life. Wow. Uh, truly. Thank you. Uh, so, well done on that. Um, <laughs> one of the biggest selling points of the film is obviously that it's all done in one take. So one, yeah. one take. But, yeah, you know, about it. Yeah. yeah, it was just a really long day on set filming that. There are a few little sneaky cuts hidden there. Hmm. And because I'm a bit of a film nerd and an arsehole, when I was watching <laughs> it, I was trying to like, trying to see where are those little cuts. When you watch it for the first time, were you kind of trying to see like, where did they sneak in that little cut? Well, we know. Yeah. We, we do know, but I mean, it's kind of unguessable. Yeah. I and mean, you, you probably wouldn't tell. No, did you, oh, spot, no. did you spot any? I spotted maybe one or two, but then sometimes I'd be like, wait a minute, it's been like 15 minutes, there must have been a cut. Right. <laughs> Cuss you, 1917, but yeah. yeah. We did sequences of long shots that sometimes lasted, you know, normally about seven minutes, but yeah. the most we did was eight and a half minutes. Eight and a half minutes in yeah. one go. Yeah. I mean, the continuity person on this film must have had, I guess maybe, a, I would have said a nightmare, but for them probably a dream, because there's so much continuity. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, you were saying eight and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. So obviously you're doing everything in one take. Your first thought is, if something goes wrong, you're resetting from the start. Yeah. Like, what was the longest take you did where you had to then reset? There was a particular scene which I remember my rifle slipping off my shoulder, and it was like kind of, it was a shot ruining rifle slip. Yeah, yeah. Multiple times, and it literally, that's like the last 15 seconds of the take of it's just the body position meant that it slid off, and I was just thinking, and we, you know, so we got through five minutes of footage again and again and again, and every yeah. time I was like, oh, no, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I think I read an interview where they said there were like 36 takes on some of these shots. Yeah, is that more right? Maybe more, more. Of them, yeah. More. Yeah, maybe more. And, and the thing is, with a filming day as well, we would rehearse 20 plus times before we even started shooting. So we'd probably, you know, in a day we'd probably do it 50, 60 times. Yeah. There's one scene in particular, this isn't really a spoiler because it's in the trailer, uh, where your character, George, is running along the front line. But he's running the wrong way, he's running sideways. <laughs> yes. And, uh, and in the film, you just get body checked, I think twice, yes. by, by two extras. What, presumably that was planned no. or not? No, <laughs> no. Because no, no. I was thinking, is there someone whose job is specifically just to target you and <laughs> knock you over? Here he comes, here he comes, and yeah, yeah. boom, I got him. Uh, um, no, no, we like we rehearsed like in various sort of like layers, you know, sort of less people, more people, more people for weeks, and then we'd rehearsed on the day a number of times, and it was such a big setup, like it was five hours to reset those explosions because all the explosions you see are real, you know, well, they're all scary. practical effects. Um, and then yeah, and then when we when we came to do the take. You know, we'd, we'd prepared, but obviously everyone was kind of marking it, and there was there was silence when we were doing it. There was just someone kind of going boom, boom, <laughs> and so when like your blood's up and every and everything's kicking off, everyone was just kind of it became a lot more real, obviously, and mm. yeah, and I just got hit. Um, but the kind of the rule was always, unless you hear Sam say stop, keep going, because there could be something in it. You know, there could yeah. it could it could work. Um, and, and that was one of the things, one of those mistakes that, yeah, that's made it in. It doesn't look like a mistake though, it makes it feel so much more real. But also yeah. when we were doing it, it's like, we were kind of like, well, of course you would get knocked over. Yeah, right? yeah. It's like, like, you know, you know, that of course that's going to happen. So, um, so yeah, it's great. I'm really pleased that it's, that it's in there. I, I love those little accidents. The first guy who hits you, happy accident. Second guy who hits you thinks, I can get in the film if I hit that guy. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's like, he I knew out the corner of his eye, and he's like, I can yeah. take him down. It suddenly becomes a massive fight. Scene yeah, yeah. Everyone, like, by take five, through. everyone's dogpiling you. <laughs> yeah. Sam's like, I don't know this well. <laughs> a part I absolutely loved in this film is there's no spoilers, but there's a scene, uh, George, where you're running through these ruins and there's these flares going off and the lights are sort of flashing in and out. Yeah. And it was just mind blowing. Um, how on earth did that? happen well well we actually we built a model for that so they, they were like all sets were modeled kind of exactly mm -hmm. and that set that, that Dennis Gaston the production designer built they had a model of it and as you say there's like all these flares going across and it's warping all the shadows and it's kind of at that stage a sort of dream you know the, the, yeah. like that, that point in the story and so even like we had to measure the flares were real bags of magnesium that they lit and weighed so that they realised that, that that bag would burn for 22 seconds, 18 seconds, 17 seconds. So we'd work that all out. But then to get the path of the flare, which were attached to bungee cords that would then kind of be zip-lined across the set, they, on this model, had 
almost, you know that game, no, it's, it's not Operation, but you know when you've got like the, the thing round the wire oh, yeah, and, yeah. and you've got like, it will electrocute you. It had this perfectly to scale modelled set, this miniature, and then they have like coat hangers with fairy lights attached and there's a burning church as well and a big light bulb where the burning church would be and they'd switch all the lights off in the room so that they could map where the shadows would go and the timings that would be correct for the scene. So it was just like that level of planning was, was with everything, but that particularly was a very satisfying thing to see, this yeah. little perfect model. That's absolutely crazy. That's such <laughs> so much more complicated than I thought it would be. Yeah. Was there a little mini you in the set? There, there was, and, but then also like to, to achieve that shot, I think we had, you know, without giving too much away, there's, I think there was nine people operating the camera at different stages, you know, because we went from a crane to handheld to a buggy that came out the alley back to handheld again. Mm. And Roger Deakins, the director of photography, operating the head of the camera on, on these wheels, you know, that from with a radio signal could manipulate the head of the camera. So it was just, it was mad. It was great. It's mad, but it, it paid off because that scene is incredible. Um, there's some amazing um, supporting actors in this film. Andrew Scott, I mean, there is no scene that Andrew Scott can't steal. Yeah. Uh, and he's great in this film. He got laughs. Yeah. I don't know if those lines are even funny, but he got the laughs. Um, what was it like working with him? What's, how was that? Amazing. I mean, as you say, he's just in that scene. He's just so dry and yeah. sarcastic. He looks like he's been there for years. He don't care. He couldn't care less about you know our characters. Mm. Um, but that's that's the thing with all these actors that came in. You know they only really have one or two scenes. Uh, they're just characters that we meet along the way. But you know the the detail that they brought to their characters and the backstory that they'd sort of come up with was just mind blowing. So had he come up with backstory of his own? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean it, just the stuff that they brought that weren't on the page to the day. You know made amazing performance by all of them. Yeah. Did you do any of that yourselves with your own characters? Yeah, yeah, loads of it. Because it's like, because you know, you don't really get to know either. It's, you only get little flashes of insight as mm. to who these men are, with what they talk about, and they very rarely sort of specifically say what they're, you know, give information about themselves to each other. In the same way that, you know, like, you know, friends who have known each other for a long time, you kind of don't, you know, you don't, you don't address as if there's a third party listening in. So it's just all kind of, I don't know, it's just more natural that way. And I think, but that said, despite the fact that they barely talk about it openly, I think home and where they're from and their experience up to the point with which you meet them defines who those men are. Mm. So it was really important for us to have a sense of what that was. Yeah, can you tell us something that's not revealed in the film about your characters? Um, I don't want to give too much away. Any uh, allergies? I feel like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's got like a gluten thing. Yeah, Sco Scofield's gluten it's free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I think, uh, I think Blake, I think the reason why he joined and signed up uh, to join the war, I think because his brother joined first. Mm -hmm. And I think Blake looks up to his brother, you know, more than anyone. Uh, imagine he grew up in the countryside, just him, his mum, his dog, his brother. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, without giving too much away. And when, when your brother's the bodyguard? It's like, I mean, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Really, pretty cool, yeah. <laughs> what about old uh, Schofield? Oh, it's Go oh, Schofield. Philip Schofield. Over there. <laughs> Philip Schofield over there. He's, uh, he's actually a chat show host back at Oh, home, really? Yeah, yeah. Um, you look familiar, yeah. You know, yeah. So it's, and then the war's taken him away from his job, and that's why he not doesn't like to talk as much. <laughs> sure. He reminds him of his chat show days. Doesn't want to do it for free, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, there's crazy buzz around this film. Uh, it's got all these awards, got Golden Globes, BAFTA noms. How does that feel for you right now to be in the middle of that that kind of buzz? It's amazing. It's, it's something that I've never really experienced before going on to these award shows and stuff. And it's something that we I ain't necessarily thought about until suddenly you realise you're at the Golden Globes red carpet and you're winning awards. It's an amazing thing. Mm. And what's amazing, you know, so far is that the film's not even out yet. So to be getting recognition like this already is, you know, mind blowing. Yeah. 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 And the uh, the old Oscars are coming up. You clearing a little you clearing a little shelf. <laughs> 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 No, just dust and sound. <laughs> you know, no little sort of glimmer of hope in there. You might be. Uh... No, I mean you can never predict things like that, can you? We just got to see what happens. So far, we've been lucky. Mm -hmm. You never know. Did you ever, when you were younger, maybe get a little shampoo bottle? Uh, Hold it on the shower. No, I know. To be honest, it was more of a kind of like it was a World Cup. Yeah. Than oh really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those days are gone. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. 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 Didn't get picked for Chelsea, so... Uh. <laughs> we have to talk about Game of Thrones, because George, you, you let slip the other day that you auditioned for Game of Thrones. Did, did I? Right, yeah, yeah, Apparently, yeah, yeah, yeah. according yeah, yeah. to the internet. Right. Yeah. Um, must be and of course, yeah. Dean, <laughs> you might not know this, but you were in Game of Thrones. Was I? You were, in fact. <laughs> um, do you remember what role it was you were, you were trying to get? I, did, I, like, I do, but I genuinely... I, I've got a funny thing, I always feel 
terrible about discussing the auditions that you have or haven't got. Like, I mean, it shouldn't be like a weird thing for them because they got it over me. It's not yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, I didn't turn it down, I just didn't get the role. Yeah. But yeah, there was, there was one that I remember. I, I auditioned twice over the years. But Did I, you I, really? Yeah, I don't remember yeah, the second one. Yeah, yeah, yeah with Nina. Mm. But, so it was Nina who cast Game of Thrones who cast yeah, this. Cast this, nice. yeah. So, yeah. She's like, oh, you want? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I was like, please, <laughs> give me a third go. Now that it's all come to an end, if you could just pick any character to have been. You know what? I've not watched it. I've, never, I've not seen yeah. it. I'm like one of the few people right here. No, I, do you know what? <laughs> no. Listen, no, I, I haven't watched the last two. The last two uh, seasons? Yeah. Have you, I've got a question here. What did you think of the last oh. season? Well, I what am it. I going to do? Yeah, no, I mean, a lot of people, some people liked it, some people didn't, didn't they? Mm. But it's just the way it is. What can you do about it? Fair, very it's diplomatic answer. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah I mean, very nice. I mean, spoiler alert, it ended. So yeah, it ended. Yeah, there we did go. It? <laughs> yeah, it did, yeah. Ah. There's a dragon or two along the way. Nice. Um, what's next for both of you? 1918? 1918, yeah. Uh, yeah. We're just going to go through the years, basically. <laughs> yeah. Not, well, there's coming out in, in February, there's a film called The True History of the Kelly Gang, mm -hmm. which was about an Australian outlaw called Ned Kelly. Um, who, who I play in, in this, this film. And it's a kind of, it's a very different version on, on that story. He's a real bloke and there's been films made about him before, but this is a very different take on it. So that's coming out. And then another film called A Guide to Second Date Sex as well, which is about a couple on their second date and sort of over the course of the night, the pressures of feeling like they have to have sex on the second date. Well, different energies to those films. Different energies, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. First World War, sex. Well, and, so. yeah, and then, and then the outlaw. I was about to say Australian yeah, Bushman, yeah. but maybe that's uh, <laughs> uniting the two. <laughs> <laughs> um, yourself? Uh, there's a film I did called Here Are The Young Men, which is based on a book set in Dublin in 2003 about a group of friends just graduated from school, but they spiralled down a black hole, basically, with drugs, alcohol, violence. It's pretty dark. Yeah, so that should Fair be enough. Out. Yeah, yeah. So quite a dark streak you're on at the yeah. moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's nice, though. Addicted to the darkness. Uh, gents, lovely to talk to you. Love the film. Thanks, Goodbye. Man. Thank you. <laughs> Good goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Have you seen anything else recently that you like? Um, I saw Cats. What's that like? <laughs> I mean, 1917, cats. <laughs> yeah. 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 Isn't Ian McKellen in it as well? Yeah. And aren't they great friends? Yeah. I feel like they both would have gone, this will be lovely. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, they're just like, as long as they get to do it together, like, Ian, yeah. I've just got this script, you must be a cat too. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know. Uh, anyway, yes, World War One. <laughs> yeah. um, no man's land. No man's land. <laughs> no cat's land. <laughs>